Thanks so much for your company. I am Pius Kujo Baka. To our very first story, inflation for the month of March 2023 falls sharply to 45%. Well, this was influenced by some deflation recorded by food and non-alcoholic beverages. Dr. Professor Samuel Kopnenim is the government statistician. The month of March 2023 stood at 45.0% for March 2023. This indicates a 7.8 percentage point drop relative to the rate that was recorded in the month of February 2023. In February 2023, we recorded a rate of 52.8, and in January 2023, 53.6. So we are seeing a sharper decline in the rate of inflation between February 2023 and March 2023, with a 7.8% point drop between these two time periods. From a regional perspective, we identified the Western North recording the highest rate of inflation of 67.3% and the Volta region recording the least rate of inflation of 25.6%. Disaggregating the, the national rate of inflation from a food and non-food perspective, we recorded food inflation 50.8% and non-food inflation 40.6%, indicating a 10.2 percentage point drop, percentage point difference between food and non-food inflation. Food inflation saw a much sharper drop as it recorded 59.1% for the month of February 2023, indicating an 8.3 percentage point difference from a food inflation perspective and a 7.3 percentage point difference from a non-food perspective. So the slow rate of inflation that we are seeing is largely driven by the sharper drop from a food perspective relative to a non-food perspective. From a locally produced item and an imported item perspective, we saw locally produced items recording an inflation rate of 41.9 percent and Inflation on imported items, 51.6%, indicating a 9.7 percentage point difference between locally produced items and imported items. And it is important that we expand this discussion further. Joining me via Zoom is research lead at GCB Capital Courage, Buti, for his perspective on this um, latest trend. Grateful, Buti, you could join me on the marketplace. Your initial thoughts on this latest rate? Unmute for me, Courage. Sorry, uh, good afternoon to you and your listeners. Um, my pleasure having me. Yes, um, I think I expected that inflation would decline, uh, even if the over 7% mar uh, margin of decline was a bit um, of a surprise. Because um, from my simulations, really, the expectation was that we'll begin to see this sharp declines from April, May, thereabout. But it came early, and, and it's, it's actually a good news at this point in time. You look at the, the, the trajectory of inflation and the drivers of, of that decline, really, and you realize that, I mean, since the start of the year, CD has been volatile, volatile in the sense that it's moved up and down. But generally, the trend over the last few weeks or so, and particularly for the March inflation window, was one of an appreciation, and that trend is continuing. You've seen also between, uh, I think, uh, uh, February to all the way to the point we are now, fuel prices at the pump have dropped by, I mean, more than 20% over the period. And you would largely see that for the period 2022, the main drivers of inflation have largely been these factors, really. So for their trend now reversing, you will begin to see impact on prices generally on the market. And I'm not surprised that transport inflation in particular declined from 70% in, in March and in February now to about 52% in March. And you will see that for the first time in about five and eight weeks, petrol and diesel, uh, items that have been top contributors to inflation have actually dropped out of the top 20 list for contributors to inflation. And so generally, it's a trend that we expect, and it's a trend that could continue. We can see sharper drops in inflation going forward from here. Interesting. Now, um, this is coming at a time the IMF has um, had to, you know, review the economic growth globally, and of course that of Ghana to about um, a little below 2%. Now, this is coming at a time we are seeing the inflation rate, you know, dropped. Does it come to you as a surprise? And how do we reconcile the two? 
What years growth has been on the downturn? See where policy rate is 29.5, very high, um, until April. The uh, uh, reference rate was was 32.7 or so. Yes, it has dropped now to about 25.7 or so percent, really. Uh, and you can see cost of credit within the banking system towards private sector, and of course, that rate cost of credit was approaching the 40 percent. So really, cost of credit was very tough for, for, for businesses, very unfriendly. In the same period also, the Bank of Ghana would not have the, 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 the room to support growth the way they would have loved to if inflation allowed. And given government situation also, you would have had to cut back on discretionary spending, most of which go to directly target growth, really. And so it explains why the growth trend is slowing. It is not only for the period 2023. It started from second half 2022, and the leading indicators of economic activity, as published by the by, by the Bank of Ghana, shows that continuous trend in the I mean of decline in the composite index of economic activity since that time. In fact, it's around 7.6 percent negative growth as we speak, really. And so it just confirms the general trend of uh, negative or slowing growth that we have seen since half year 2022, and that trend is going to continue, particularly in a period where we are about to begin some front-loaded fiscal consolidation. You expect that governments tighten the fiscal stance a bit. You will not see a lot of discretionary spending going into the 2023 budget if the program eventually starts. The Bank of Ghana is agreeing to a zero a memorandum for zero deficit financing, which means that if you are not able to raise the needed revenue from market um, from uh, taxes and, of course, from the concessional sources, you may not have the Bank of Ghana backstop, really. So under these circumstances, growth will be challenged. And so I'm not surprised at all that uh, the uh, World Bank or the IMF is actually revising their growth down to about 1.6%. But if we can raise the needed revenues from, from the tax policies we rolled out this year, if we can actually set, uh, complete the debt restructuring pro process both local and external, and then uh, achieve some interest savings from there, then those savings can actually go into arrears clearance, which will mean money for contractors, and most of them will go back to site, and it could also mean targeted spending in areas that could be growth enhancing. So it's not all lost, but the circumstances of the time means that we are in a slow growth era. I want to pick your thoughts on um, these uh, projections the IMF is making in relation to the um, inflation rates, you know, increasing across board. Let's take a listen, um, or let's take a, a, a listen to the IMF uh, speaking on this, and I'll come back to you for your reactions. According to the Fund's April World Economic Outlook report, inflation in Ghana will end the year at 29.4%. However, in 2024, inflation will average 22.2% and end the year at 15%. The report further said global headline inflation has been declining since mid-2022 at a three-month seasonally adjusted annualized rate. It's added a fall in fuel and energy commodity prices, particularly for the United States, Europe, and Latin America, has contributed to this decline. To dampen demand and reduce underlying core inflation, the fund pointed out that central banks around the world have been raising interest rates since 2021, both at a faster pace and in a more synchronous manner. Inflation stayed above 50% in Ghana in 2022. All right, so Kari, you've seen the reports there. Now, how do we sustain this growth we are witnessing? Well, you mean the decline in inflation? Exactly. All right, sure, yeah. I mean, so, so we, are, we are in an era now where these effects alone is, is pulling inflation down or will pull inflation down in the next few months. We are also in an era where the CD quite, is quite responding to the optimism that IMF deal is imminent. And, and what we need to do at this point in time, I believe, is to uh, rally on the back of that balance of payment support that is imminent, and then the other internal initiatives that we have long touted but never really got going, uh, domestic industrialization and reducing our reliance on import and all of that, and effective ways of managing the, the domestic FX market, check the activities of the uh, black market people, check activities of people who are the speculators really to try to bring some sanity into the regulation of that market. When we do those ones, 
and then we decisively deal with the whole issue about oil importing and the total import bill, find ways of managing that. Now there is a good for oil policy. How long is it going to last? What is the impact on pricing? If it is something worth entrenching, we have to entrench it and find ways of streamlining that process so that we can uh, achieve its, its, its uh, impact on pricing. And most importantly, how do we entrench the gains we stand to get from this IMF program? We've seen in the time past where programs yielded low uh, inflation, yielded higher growth, and a more stable currency uh, outlook, really. But over time, it gets reversed. The monetization of the deficit. Now there is a, z a zero memorandum in, in place. But what will it be after the program? We need to find ways of decisively entrenching some of these macroprudential policies that would ensure that inflation is predictable going forward. So for the year 2023, and for the period between now till probably end of year, you will see base effects and the currencies dynamics and oil pricing dynamics actually impact inflation. That is what will sustain the trend to around 29, 28% per my personal projections really. But beyond the program, we need to entrench it and it will require some decisive policies from the government to do so. We are grateful, Courage Boti, for your perspective on inflation-related stories. We are indeed grateful, Courage, joining us.